Okay, so it's supposed to be a perfect day at Coco Key, but honestly, it's cloudy and it's supposed to be like real rain coming. We were on Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas. Well, for two weeks, bad weather was predicted for the day that we would be at Coco Key. Coco Key is in the Berry Islands, the Bahamas. The nearest city that I could put in to get a semi-accurate forecast was Nassau or Sandy Point. And the forecast never changed. So on FYI, many cruise lines own their own islands. In the past, we have bypassed those ports when the weather was really bad. But now that the companies have upgraded and invested in activities on those islands, they have been reluctant to skip them. So be prepared. You might head for those islands on winter rainy days where the temperature can go as low as 65 degrees and the rain can come down steadily. Oh, and by the way, although I learned the word is key, you can say K. So here we are at Coco Key. As cruisers know, some of the amenities from the ship follow you onto the private island. Most of the food is free. Your drink package may carry over to most of the bars and basic admission to many of the beach areas is free with a complimentary lounge chair. However, many cruise lines are adding excursions and other amenities that you can purchase. And you can grab a towel from the cruise ship before you disembark. There were two ships in port that day from Royal Caribbean, Oasis of the Seas and Anthem of the Seas. And if the weather had been much better, it could have gotten really crowded. So since the weather was going to start getting sketchy around noon, we headed straight to the Thrill Park. The Thrill Park is a water park that costs extra. It's not included in the complimentary activities on the island. Purchase the Thrill Park as an excursion. To enter the park, use your room key or the wow band that Royal Caribbean sells now. The highlight of the Thrill Park are the multiple water slides at two main stations, Daredevil's Tower and Splash Summit. Daredevil's Tower currently has the tallest water slide in America, as stated on Royal Caribbean's website. The other area is Splash Summit. The water slides all originate from these same two areas. You climb the stairs to the entrance of each slide. Up along the way, you will see signs that will tell you how long the wait is for a particular slide. It could get a little confusing with four water slides coming out of the same area. Sometimes you did not know which line that you were on. Other amenities in the water park area were showers, lockers, restrooms, and the snack shack, which is the complimentary food that will come with your cruise. Off from this area is Hideaway Beach, which I didn't get to because the weather was so bad. It hindered the way we wanted to explore the island. Hideaway Beach is for adults only. That will be on my list for the next time. Royal Caribbean's website recommends reserving a spot for Hideaway Beach on its app while you're on board the ship. The lounge chairs, hammocks, swings, and eating at Hideaway Hut and the Slice of Paradise pizza spot are complimentary. The other two main areas in the Thrill Park area are the Wave Pool and the Adventure Pool. The Wave Pool was a typical wave pool. For the most part, the waters would be kind of calm, maybe even shallow. But then after a while, when the countdown happens, get ready for the big wave. The Adventure Pool means that you can work your way across the adventure by trying to hold on to some ropes and staying stable without falling into the water. So even though it did not appear as if everyone got off the two big ships that were in port, it was still crowded at the water slides. When the wait started to get between 45 to 60 minutes long and we realized the rain was coming and we really wanted to snorkel and go to the beach area, we headed out of Thrill Park. So we took one last look around and then headed to the little shopping area that was outside of the park. If you do go out and you want to come back in again, you can, just make sure you have your room key or your wow band so that you can scan back in. This is particularly important if you decide to leave your stuff over there while you explore the rest of the island. Thrill Park does cost extra and there is a height restriction for people to go on the rides. 
However, if you have younger ones with you, the free activities are outside Thrill Park, such as Splash Away Bay. And to the left of the entrance to the Thrill Park is Captain Jill's Galleon. Jill Island is one of the main beach areas. The other beach area is South Beach. There's the Straw Market shopping area, cruise complimentary dining, kiosks where you can rent snorkeling gear, complimentary lounge chairs and umbrellas and hammocks to chill out on, and just a plain day at the beach. Prior to getting there, you might want to check out the excursions that cross extra, such as a jet ski rental, a cabana, or a seaside daybed. The last time we were on Coco Key, all of this hadn't been completed yet, especially the thrill park. So having the signs to show us to where to get around were very helpful. Within Chill Island is Oasis Lagoon. If hanging out at the beach and getting all sandy is not quite your style, then there's a pool that you can swim in. A bridge spans the two areas of Oasis Lagoon, which is huge and seems to be able to accommodate if everyone did get off the ship. One of the features of Oasis Lagoon was the swim up bar. Over in Thrill Park, if you signed up for the zip lining, that's where it will be. You will zip line right on over the wave pool. Also available was a helium balloon activity, which wasn't operating that day. So, I'm going to sum up my less than perfect day at Coco Key. If the weather was better, everything would have probably been more crowded and the water slides in the Thrill Park would have probably had two hour wait rather than the 30 to 40 minute lines that we had. Two huge ships were in port that day, but obviously everybody didn't get off. The beaches really were not crowded. We were able to find lounge chairs with an umbrella at Chill Island. However, lack of sun made the snorkeling a little bit dark and I was able to at least get one hour in before the rain really started coming down hard. Speaking of which, the rain did start early as predicted, so we only spent three and a half hours at Coco Key and only one hour of that snorkeling, which I love to do. We could have stayed at the beach, but the rain made it much cooler and a little messy. It was hard to lounge in a wet chair and the umbrellas didn't stop much of the rain from shielding us. We actually tried to stay a little longer, but since we will cruise again, it didn't matter, so we went back to the ship. Hopefully, we'll get to Coco Key again with better weather and we'll be able to give you a better report and we'll be able to tour the whole island. We hadn't been there since 2018, so we really wanna see all the improvements. Until then, I'm the NYC Traveler and we've been to Royal Caribbean's private island.